practice session task. 1. Define the target password, numbers only. 2. Define a string containing all possible numbers from 0 to 9. 3. Initialize the attempts counter from 0. 4. Start an infinite loop to brute force the password. 5. Store in the infinite loop a variable with name brute underscore force. 6. Increment the attempts counter. 7. Generate a brute force attempt, random length between 3 and 6. 8. Append a random digit from the character's string to the brute force variable. 9. Check if the brute force attempt matches the target password. 10. Print the cracked password and exit the loop. 11. Print the attempt number and the current brute force attempt. Pause the video and take your time to solve the task, then come back to see my solution. Here is my solution. First line declares a local variable named target password and assigns it the value 1234, which is a string representing the target password. Next line declares a local variable named container and assigns it the string, which contains the digits from 0 to 9. Here we declare a local variable named attempts and initializes it with the value 0. Now we start a while loop that will continue indefinitely because the loop condition is always true. This line declares a local variable named brute force and initializes it as an empty string. Attempts is a variable that tracks the number of attempts made to crack the password. So, the line increases the value of attempts by one each time it is executed, effectively counting the attempts made to crack the password. These lines are used to determine the length of the brute force attempt, ensuring that it is a random length between 3 and 6 characters, and to randomly select characters from the container string for each position in the attempt.
Here we append a randomly selected character from the container string to the brute force variable. The subfunction extracts a single character at the index i from the container string and concatenates it to the existing brute force string. This process repeats for each character in the generated brute force attempt. Now we can check if the current brute force attempt matches the target password variable. If it is so the condition evaluates to true, and further actions can be taken based on this condition. These lines are part of the loop structure and output control flow. Print is used to display that the password is found. Then breaks the loop immediately, as the password has been found. It exits the loop once the password is cracked. Else introduces the alternative block of code to be executed if the condition in the if statement is false. At last we print out the current attempt number and the corresponding brute force attempt. This print provides feedback on the progress of the brute force attack. The first end marks the end of the if-else block. The last end closes the loop structure. This task provided hands-on experience with using an infinite loop and string manipulation to simulate a common security attack scenario. We've covered a variety of loop structures, including for loops, while loops, repeat until loops, and the use of infinite and nested loops. We've explored how these loops can be used in different scenarios. There's one more loop structure to cover, the generic for loop. We'll save that for a future tutorial to ensure a solid understanding of the fundamentals.